welcome to metrology lab first of all check whether you have your rough record calculator and sufficient graph sheets for today's exercise otherwise please go and bring them you can wait a few minutes for them so once you are ready we will start the session so as we go along the material you can please fill in the appropriate boxes in your rough record okay so first of all let us see what are the outcomes of this course so at the end of this course you should be able to plan and conduct experiments involving a single factor then you should be able to use the common measuring instruments in mechanical engineering area then after carrying out a measurement you should be able to determine the or quantify the quality of your measurement for that we need to compute the measurement uncertainty so that also we will be learning and then a few measuring instruments we will discuss in detail so you should be able to explain the principle and working of such instruments then about grading policy so s and f will be absolute grading others will be relative grading but there won't be any automatic pass so you have to see that you work such sufficiently for a pass then assessment so we have two introductory classes at the end of each class there is a small quiz so both together five marks then the quiz for the introductory tour and cycle 1 that will be 17 marks then quiz for cycle 2 and cycle 3 there will be 18 marks so these quizzes will be in edu server but uh, okay you will uh, carry out the test in a classroom and it will be uh, the questions will be randomly chosen for each chosen student then rough record carries 10 marks and fair record 20 marks final practical exam will be there at the end of the course so that will carry 30 marks so final exam will carry 30 marks okay then quizzes 18 marks for a short answer type quiz at the end of a cycle and 17% marks at the end of the second cycle then about introductory classes so first class there will be a quiz for 2 person marks and second class there will be a quiz for 3 person marks so no makeup test will be possible for these tests so attendance will be taken at at least in the beginning of each class so don't miss classes on assembly so about equipment so whenever you come across an equipment you should make it a habit to identify the lease count range etc of such equipment and make a note of it in your rough record and as necessary in the you will have to copy it in the fair record do not force so many equipment there will be some movement which is based on a screw thread etc so you should not apply too much force so if you feel any resistance to movement sometimes there are locks for the threads so you should request for resistance you should ask the lab staff or the concerned ta and uh, avoid damage to equipment so especially micrometers so you should not use the um, big spindle but only the ratchet mechanism to apply force otherwise there will be 
excessive force applied to the component and the component may get damaged or the micrometer may get damaged. Cleaning. So this is a very important step in all metrology operations. So all rust prone equipment should be cleaned and petrolingially applied before their return. So to prevent further rust, we should store it after cleaning properly. So when you come to the class, you should come prepared with the rust record printed format and also go through the manuals and come prepared. So we may ask one or two questions to each group and the marks will be shared among all in the group. The rough record PDF formats will be provided through EduServer. So all the measured values should be noted in the rough record and they should be attested and valued by the faculty before leaving the lab. So this rough record you will have to submit at the end of the semester and that will carry 10 mark weightage. So measured values should be recorded directly in the rough record. So some students have a habit of writing on chits of paper and then copying data. So that is not a good practice. So avoid writing on scrap paper and transferring later. So group work. So we have some a large number of students in each group. So you should see that all of you get an opportunity to contribute to the work. So everybody should practice with the equipment, get some practice mm -hmm. with the equipment. And as far as possible, each member should perform a separate set of measurements. That is for one set of readings, all the required measurements should be taken by one person. So he is responsible for that full set. And wherever possible, we should try to do that. So each member should record the data separately, even if only one reading is taken by the group. So don't think that one person will take all the readings and others will copy later. That's not a good practice. So as and when you take the reading, please make a note of the reading. So that will avoid any mistakes. Later you will get confused whether some number is written uh, illegibly, then it is difficult for others to find out. So note the reading simultaneously by all person in the same group. Next we come to fair record. Fair record also we are providing printed formats. The PDFs will be available in Edu server. So so that's a first week, you don't need to bring the fair record, but the next week onwards, the fair record with all observations, graphs, etc., completely filled in, should be brought to the class. So the fair record printed format, actually it will be in batch 1, batch 2, batch 3, batch 4, batch 5, etc. So you will have to, your batch, whichever experiment starts. So if you are in batch 2, so batch 2 experiment should be first in your fair record. So you have to arrange the experiments in that order for both fair record and rough record. So 20 marks for fair record. Then in the uh, fair record, you have to fill all the observations and also give the result. So result means so in the vocabulary we will learn measurement result is defined as the set of quantity values being attributed to a measurement together with any other available relevant information. So what is this other available relevant information? So that is about the quality of your measurement. So usually a measurement result is expressed as a single measured quantity value and a measurement uncertainty. So that is very important. So whenever you give the measurement result, you should also give the measurement uncertainty of that result. 
then discussion will be there after the result. So here you have to discuss what is or any unusual observations or anything you felt or some problems during the experiment, some reasons for unusual readings, etc. All those things you can discuss in the pair record. Then graphs should be drawn in graph sheets and use pen for graphs, don't use pencil. So graphs should be cut to suitable size and pasted in the fair record. The graph sheet should not project outside. And don't staple graphs, it's very unwieldy and the graph book will be become very thick and very difficult to handle later. So discussion, discuss the sources of uncertainties, the correctness or validity or any unusual observation. All these you can write in the discussion portion space given in the pair record. Next we discuss about graphs. So graphs should have title. So what is that? Is it a calibration plot? Is it a correction plot? Is it which, which instrument is it applicable for? So when was it carried out? When was the calibration carried out, etc. Don't simply say, okay, input pressure versus output pressure. Don't just repeat the X and Y variables, like stress versus strain. Don't just write stress versus strain. So this is, okay. So the load versus deflection for a particular device, etc. So do not write scale 1 centimeter equal to 15 Newton, etc. So the scale can be obtained from the graph itself. So write the digits along the x and y axis and we can identify the scale from that, that is sufficient. Don't write special, uh, especially the scale on the top right hand corner, etc. So identify the x-axis and y-axis variables, what variables are plotted along each axis. And important thing is giving to give units. Many times that is something which is forgotten. So please don't forget to put the units. So graphs should be like this. So we have the independent variable on the x-axis, the dependent variable on the y-axis, and these are the individual observations. And we usually fit a line to these points, and the equation of the line should be written along the line. So write the regression equation along the best fit line. Okay, graphs, the data points should not be like this, but like this. So what is the difference? So here, this along the x-axis, it is ranging only this much, whereas we have space, at least double this space. So choose the scales so that the variables cover the full range of the axis. Choose scale so that points cover the graph region. So graphs don't use just a single point, but a very prominent plotting symbol, a darkened circle or an empty circle or a triangle or a square or whatever. But it should be clear that there is a point. It should not uh, be an accidental point. So if you simply put a point like this, we don't know whether it is by accident you made a dot or there is actually an observation there. And when there are two points overlapping each other. So use some way to show that there are two points. So we should be able to count the total number of observations from the graph. How many points are there? So this is one way. So the central, the intersecting region is actually the point and this shows that there are two points at the same place. So this is an example of a good graph. So title, dependence of the traffic ticket cost on automobile speed. So x-axis is automobile speed, kilometers per hour. Cost of the average speeding ticket in dollars on the y-axis. And of course, here of the regression equation is missing. First of all, what is calibration?
So according to the international vocabulary of metrology, calibration is defined as an operation that under specified conditions in a first step establishes a relation between the quantity values with measurement uncertainties provided by measurement standards and <clears throat> corresponding indications with associated measurement uncertainties and in a second step uses this information to establish a relation for obtaining a measurement result from an indication. So we have basically two steps, first step and second step. First step, we establish a relation between measurement standards with corresponding indications. And second step, we establish a relation for obtaining a measurement result from an indication. So the two steps together we say is calibration. So take readings in random order unless otherwise mentioned. So why random order? We'll discuss in detail now. Then calibration equations should be determined by the method of least squares. So the best fitting line can be determined using various methods, but we will prefer the method of least squares. So of course, for these calculations, you can use calculator, no doubt. Then quantify the calibration uncertainty with 95% confidence. So this has become the default standard everywhere that 95% confidence intervals are used to quantify uncertainties. But it need not be, some cases you may use 90% or 99% also. So that's why we specify this as a standard for our lab that we will use 95% confidence. And we will currently be neglecting the uncertainty in the input. So in the theory class, you will learn how to consider this uncertainty and determine the total uncertainty. And then for calibration, plot the correction graph, unless otherwise mentioned. Don't plot the calibration plot. Instead, plot the correction plot, which we'll discuss in the next class. Okay, with that we'll go into detail of why you should take readings in random order.